iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz. For someone that hasn't seen it or wouldn't know what to expect, I would say this show is about storytelling at its core, and you follow uh, one particular character's story by the name of Henry, and he opens up about his coming of age as a young person growing up in the small town in the middle of nowhere, his best friends, and how he finds himself through heartbreak and through a really tumultuous time, um, and uh, how he comes out the other end through the support and guidance of community. Yeah, funny enough, I mean, nothing uh, really drew me to it because the way this all started was because um, Justin Peck, our director and choreographer, he we all had a relationship prior to starting this show together, and he asked us to be a part of it when the idea was just kind of loose, and we had a structure, but uh, nothing was concrete yet, so we kind of spent the past two years uh, finding that with each other, in a way, so nothing really drew me in as much as it was the people I was creating it with, and that's kind of what inspired everything that I think audiences uh, are seeing now, today. Yeah, I mean, it was a very quick process, it feels like, in hindsight. We started working on it two years ago, like for the very first time, and somehow, some way, we, we found ourselves here. Um, it was never the goal to bring the show to Broadway. That was never, I think, anyone's expectation as we've been building this. And so, after Chicago, we did a run in Chicago, we did a run at the Armory here in New York, and the response was just kind of undeniable, and it connected uh, to people in a way that uh, surpassed my expectations. And uh, I think the people wanted it. The people asked for it to come, and, and the show found its way there very quickly, I might add. Um, but yeah, yeah, the, I think it's because of the audience. That's the only reason we're here. Um, it was mainly, I have to owe a lot of it to my sisters, because my sisters grew up dancing, and I had a lot of energy, and uh, my parents needed to do something with that, and um, I started dancing when I was eight years old, and kind of just fell in love with, yes, dancing, and being able to kind of express myself through movement and physicality, but also, more than anything, the storytelling. I, I love uh, filmmaking, I love movies, I love, I love storytelling in every form and uh, to offer up my, my body and my, you know, my emotions to, to give those over to a story that I care about is uh, something that I've always connected to, even when I was a kid and somehow, some way, it's gotten me here, so I... I yeah, I don't know how that all happened, but I'm just, I'm happy to be here. They do all have their own very specific styles. I think, I, you know, this is gonna be somewhat cliche, but I would have to say my favorite is Illinois, only because so much of it, so much of the movement uh, directly lends itself to the storytelling and the circumstances, but it's also very much rooted in a technical kind of ballet world, because that's Justin's language. That also happened to be the language that I grew up training in, so that's a big part of my foundation. So there's something about uh, the language in Illinois that feels very a part of me. Um, and a part of my core, and I would have to say a show that I haven't gotten the chance to do, and I've been thinking about this one a lot recently, would be A Chorus Line, because that's, that's the second Broadway show I ever saw as a kid, and it's, it's similar to Illinois, and I know Justin kind of references it a lot uh, when referring to our show in terms of the vignettes and the storytelling and how it, it plays a part in the show, uh, so it'd have to be that, A Chorus Line. Yeah, I mean, we're fortunate enough. We have a physical therapist and uh, who's there uh, a majority of the week with us, um, and and she really takes care of us. She gives us exercises. She just, you know, helps. She helps us become more aware of like what's hurting and why. Like she gets like right to the point. And so it's a lot of body maintenance. It's a lot of uh, warming up, cooling down. When I was younger, doing shows, it was you know, I was 16, it would be very easy for me to just walk out there and like, ah, okay, let's do it. Um, but now that I've gotten older, I'm just like, oh yeah, this, uh, this can start to take its toll. So just maintenance and cooling down, taking the time after the show to roll out, stretch, 
take a hot bath, whatever it may be. Our physical therapist, her name's uh, Marika, she she works with uh, New York City Ballet a lot, and she did um, West Side Story. She's worked a lot with Justin specifically, so anytime he's doing a dance show, he kind of brings her right on board, and thank goodness, because she's a legend, and I've never had a physical therapist like her. She can isolate the problem in two seconds, and uh, yeah, I think it's because of her that we're all able to do this, you know, as much as we are. Uh, well, it's the second season, and in this season, um, it, the liars, they're all in summer school, you know, so it's kind of, it's giving the classic, uh, you know, the classic tropes of, um, you know, summer flings, summer jobs, some of them are working at the pool, some of them are, you know, working at an ice cream store, uh, but it's definitely, we lean even more into the, horror element of it all this season so it's violent it's 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 campy it's it's everything i think uh yeah you can expect a lot of um of scary shit this season i would say yeah stuff i know it gets it, i think it gets kind of worse though honestly in this one yeah it's, i mean it's completely it's completely different um when you're on a stage obviously you know you're performing for a whole audience of people you know for someone who's maybe three feet away from you in the front row but also for someone who's all the way in the back so you have to be uh dependent and rely on your physicality to help uh, the storytelling um and in illinois there are you know some really heartbreaking moments in the show that um are so devastating to experience like as a character within the story um, that the the movement and the the ability to move through the feelings of those circumstances are huge as a as a performer as a as an actor but also as just an artist on stage like giving uh, something to an audience of people it's huge and to like have that outlet to be able to release it like with your body is just so visceral and unlike any any experience I've ever had um, compared to you know doing it on TV everything's reserved you have a camera you know right in your face so everything just all of a sudden becomes much more concentrated and still in a way and I think that would be the biggest difference like one is still and focused and another is abandoned and very um, uh, I don't know lived in I guess physically. I, Newsies, the first thing that comes to my mind is ow. But also, uh, I feel like uh, the first thing, uh, the other thing would be, uh, you know, family. I was, I was 16 when I started doing Newsies, and I did that from 16 to 18 for two years of my life. So um, it kind of it gave me my foundation. It gave me some of my best friends who I am still fortunate enough to be very close to today. Um, and, uh, yeah, and then other than that, Al, because my knees hurt because of newsies. <laughs> Short-lived, in a way, that was a very quick experience. Um, we were on Broadway for, you know, a month, and, uh, a very valuable lesson for me. I was 18 when I did that show, and it closed very quickly, unfortunately, and it was a very, uh, important lesson to learn early on about, you know, just the ups and downs of this business, and sometimes it works out in your favor, and, and sometimes it doesn't, so that gave me a very valuable lesson, I believe, in just knowing, you know, it doesn't all last forever, and you gotta keep moving forward. Oh man, for whatever reason, you say Mean Girls, and the only thing I think of is cafeteria trays. We did, you know, we were in, um, we did a big dance to a song called Where Do You Belong in Mean Girls. Uh, you know, we had these trays and a lot of the building of the show, um, we spent time in like this, you know, cafeteria setting and I don't know, that show gave me a lot at that time in my life too because it was after Tuck Everlasting had closed, I'd been unemployed for a little while and I felt very scattered and a bit lost at that time and so Mean Girls gave me stability and that show ended up running you know a, a long time so it, it gave me uh, stability in a time where I, I really needed it and a community uh, during a time where I needed it as well. West Side Story, uh, uh, you say West Side Story and all I think of is wet because it rained on our stage in that show um, and it, it would be really cold sometimes and I just remember uh, a, like a majority of that experience I feel like the the moments that stand out in my brain are the moments where I'm just 
sitting down, getting rained on <laughs> inside. Um, but that was another. That was another very valuable experience for me. I mean, it. I I unfortunately sustained a really bad injury during that show, um, but all lessons that kind of you know came full circle with Illinois because you know it was that was right before the pandemic West Side Story and it felt like there was a big hill to climb kind of coming back from 2019 2020 that like time in my life and so I think uh, Illinois represents a lot for me personally and because that was you know that was five years ago now almost and so it's it's crazy to think that uh, somehow we found ourselves back here. I didn't think I was even gonna, you know, dance again potentially after that experience. So I I feel very fortunate that it all panned out the way it did. Oh, Billy Elliot. I mean, I think of that show and I think of just like a uh, heart, honestly, because I that show spoke to me on a visceral level, being, you know, a younger boy who grew up dancing and and also grew up, you know, having a lot of energy and wanting to funnel that into something creative and that show like gave me uh, all the room to do that and that was a huge part of my life that was like three and a half years of my life from when I was younger and it uh, it was that show is filled with so much heart and all you know you're a kid so if you're there ideally you're there because you want to be not because you know your parents want you to be ideally your your heart's in it and I was fortunate enough my heart was in it and Every step of that experience was very difficult, but also unbelievably rewarding for a little 13-year-old kid who just like really wanted to dance and perform. And yeah, that was a special one. Ragtime, that's, that one's crazy to think about too because uh, I started that show. I, I grew up ju in the DC area, just outside DC, and that show started at the Kennedy Center. So I kind of did it as like a local hire kid who just, you know, wanted to do theater and when the show ended up transferring to Broadway I had to re-audition and I ended up getting it and I moved here for the show and that's the show that started it all. That's the show that brought me to New York. That's the show that um, brought me, I went to PPAS in Midtown which is a performing arts uh, middle school, high school um, and it's it's what started it all. Honestly, it, it brought me here. It, it's what in, it's what put me in New York City and made me realize like, oh, this is, this is where I want to be. It's, it's New York or nowhere. iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz.